Hello YouTubes, we're uh, back at the shop today. I'm going to try and finish up the Double Horns uh, hand plaque that I started. Um, I had kind of an epic fail. I had went ahead and painted the hand in the second part of the video, but all my footage was upside down. Uh, yes, I am a dumbass. Uh, I do actually have the picture of the footage of what the painted hand looked like up on the uh, Halloween Forum um, website. Uh, Halloweenforum.com, it's under cobwebs and candlesticks, and you can see what the original paint job on this guy turned out to be. But since uh, we had an epic fail, we're going to make an epic fix and we're going to repaint this guy. But I want to go back and do a fast uh, review of how we started. I had went ahead and got this uh, silicone mold out I had from Michael's I got a couple years back on Reduced. It was after Halloween, so I got it for a dollar or two. I had went ahead and, and um, filled the thumb, the index finger, and the pinky and the palm with uh, fiberglass resin. And then I went ahead and made the two middle knuckles out of straight body filler. Um, we took a template, cut out an aluminum plate, aluminum plate to make the plaque for the hand to sit on. And then we went ahead and took all the fingers and the two body filler fingers, the knuckles for the hand. And I put those inside my tumbler, which is basically just nuts, bolts, sandpaper, uh, screws to kind of beat them up a little bit. And then I went ahead and glued them to the plaque with auto body filler. I went ahead and took four a little plastic, or not plastic, four little wooden, uh, little half round domes I got off Amazon. Uh, you get a whole bunch of them for, I think 13 bucks, 180 pieces. Um, and then I went ahead and beat the plaque up a little bit, beat the hand up, and I've got two extra rivets to mount this. For now, I'm gonna mount this by hanging it up. I've got a little uh, little wire clip back there for, uh, for mounting. I went ahead and panel glued that on. Um, I could always two-sided tape it to something, but I thought later on if I wanted to screw it to a door, I could drill a hole in the bottom, countersink it, drill a hole in the top, countersink it, and then use two extra rivets we'll paint up to go ahead and match. Um, that way I can have hidden fasteners and you wouldn't see it down the road. So uh, it's about time to paint this thing. We're gonna go ahead and throw some uh, black sealer on it. We'll do a base clear paint job on it. And I'll basically just repeat the process of my epic fail. So let's go throw this thing on the horse and we'll get some paint flying on this thing. Okay, we're here at the paint booth. I got the hand plaque set up on a little uh, block with a nail in it. It's gonna hold it up for us to get paint all around it. Uh, because we're shooting over multiple mediums, uh, I want to put down a urethane sealer first. This will be a paint base paint base clear paint job, just like goes on your automobile. I've been painting cars for like 25 years, so this is a snap for me. Um, I had originally laid down a black sealer that brings the wood, the aluminum, the body filler, and the resin fingers all up to one level, so it'll accept paint. It puts a uniform cover on everything. I'm going to put one coat of black urethane sealer down on everything. And then we're going to heat gun it because I freaking hate waiting. Um, and then we'll start putting color on this thing. So because it's an automotive paint, it has reducers, it has isocyanates in it. The stuff will kill your lungs. I'm going to wear a respirator. And then I'm going to get a coat on this. And once it dies back to a nice flat black, we'll come back and put our first coat of color on. So I'll put my mask on. We'll lay our sealer down. Okay, so this is a urethane sealer. For those who are going to ask, I'm using a 1.0 tip Iwata minigun. I use this for shooting small parts and little stuff, so I'm not laying down a whole lot of paint. Uh, it saves paint. It lets you keep all your detail. It's a cool gun. I like using it for small stuff, and for small stuff like this, it's perfect. So let this go ahead and die back. We'll let this flash off, and then we'll come back and put the first coat of color down on this thing. Alrighty, so it's been about 20 minutes and one heat gun session later. Um, this is automotive paint. This is not rattle can. You could most definitely do this with rattle cans. Um, I'm at the shop, so I forgot to go through my whole paint cabinet. Um, and when you're using a heating gun, even on rattle cans, when you guys are heat gunning something, you don't want to point your heat gun directly at something because it just pushes the chemicals back down on the paint and doesn't give them time to evaporate out. If you're going to heat gun, heat gun from the side. 
or the bottom. This way, it helps evaporate those chemicals faster so your stuff dries faster and it's not pushing all your chemicals down to the paint. Because an automotive paint goes on, it goes down to the bare substrate and then comes back out. It goes through any paint, body filler, primer, anything you might have down. But you could easily do this with a, a rattle can paint job. I just thought it'd be fancy and use all the stuff I had in the shop for free that was left laying around. So one heat gun later, I'm going to go ahead and throw a first coat of dark charcoal down. I want to keep this all in metallics. So I'll lay down a dark charcoal Ford color. I think it's code CX. If you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, uh, just hit me up in the comments. If you got questions, hit me up in the comments. This could be a little cal or demo could be a little um, uh, confusing because it's automotive paint, but you could easily do this rattle can. So if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions or comments about my process. Let's get the mask on. Then we'll lay down our cart of charcoal. Got one coat of our charcoal down. We're going to let that sit. I'll come back. We'll put our next color down. All right, we got our charcoal base laid down over the whole plate. I heat gunned it a little bit. It's nice and uh, slick, so it's ready for a second coat. Uh, we'll put some uh, Ford Gold down. It's an Eddie Bauer two-tone, lower color for Expeditions. Pretty popular color they used for the years. We'll put that down next, um, and then I'll go dig out my copper color. So I'll get my mask on. And let's lay down our gold. We got our gold down. I'll go ahead and get the next color loaded up. We'll get that sprayed on, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, we're back. Let's lay the copper down. That way we have something to start sanding through. We'll finish the copper, and then we'll do a coat of the dark charcoal again on top, and then we'll start sanding some of this back so some of them colors pop through. And you can see some of them bone chips and the dark colors down the scratches and make it look more aged and, and more uh, burnished like an old uh, metal plaque would be. So I get my mask on, and then we'll shoot the copper. Oh, that copper looks awesome. Totally rad. You can leave it like that, but we're going to go one more step. Although that would be fine to go ahead and clear it now, but I want to do some color in there and make it look like an old aged plaque. So we'll let this dry. We'll come back. We'll top coat it with the dark charcoal color again, that first uh, graphite Ford color. And then we'll start doing some sanding and aging on this thing before we clear it. All right, about 10 minutes later, another heat gun session later. And we're ready to put that same original first dark color, that Ford CX color, I think the paint code was, over this copper. Um, the copper is actually a GM code, uh, WA913L. It's been around for a lot of years. It's a beautiful copper color. Um, popular on Grand Dams, Grand Prix, Pontiac vibes. So let's put a coat of that down to fill in all these little pits and stone ships. And then we'll start doing some sanding and aging before we go back and clear. So let me get my mask on. There you go.
I'm trying to get some paint on the underside of these rivets so it looked natural. It was laying against the wall as uh, time and stuff and water and, and uh, weathering would tend to run downwards on the plaque. So I want my darker colors on the underside pieces as much as I can. Let that dry, then we'll come back and we'll start doing some sanding. Okay, we're back. Everything's nice and dry. I want to get in the heat gunned it again because God, I hate weeding. And this goes a lot faster in automotive paint than it does in rattle cans. And I'd like to tell you that if you guys are going to do this in rattle can, that's fine. Stay in all rattle cans. But I cannot mix and match any rattle can paint on top of this. It will eat it. It will wrinkle it. It will look like hell. Now, that's great if you're doing a piece that you want... Um, a weathered marble look is great, but for automotive paint, can't cross the streams, can't do it. So I'm going to pull this guy up. He's nice and dry. He's kind of that coppery brownish color. It looks like an old statue, which I really like. I brought some uh, old 80 grit, some 320. Uh, red scotch bright and gray scotch bright. The red scotch bright bites in harder. The gray leaves less scratches. So I'm going to start light and then probably finish harder with more scratches so I can kind of see them dark areas, fill in the little bone chips and pits and the bones and all that. And I'm gonna run all my scratches in one direction. So when this is on a wall, it looks like time and weather and humidity has all slid down the plaque. But I wanna bring out some of those little scratches and nicks and chips and everything else. I'm gonna use a couple different things here. And again, this is up to you guys. You can take it as much as you want or as little. You could have stopped at any base color that we had on there and went ahead and cleared it. Um, that's why they call it a base clear, because um, you're putting a base color down and we are sanding on raw paint. So anything you see here or do here will show up under your clear. If we were doing a single stage or like a rattle can paint job, the paint would come out shiny. Um, that's all basically lacquer based stuff. So that's why you cannot mix the systems. If I'm using automotive paint, I got to stay with automotive paint all the way through this. Otherwise, it'll wrinkle when I put clear on top. If you want that look, hey, that's great. Knock yourself out. But for me, I'm trying to make this look like an old, maybe copper or bronze plaque that's spent a lot of time sitting around on a wall somewhere and it's been aged. And I want some of those dark little pits and stuff to deepen. And I want the kind of burnished copper to come back. So you just got to be careful what you're doing because, again, you'll burn through and... Anything you do here, you will see under the clear. You can take this as far as you want it or go as light as you want it. Or I could have stopped at any base coat and went ahead and put clear on it. Let's get some right here by those little cracks. Maybe this thing fell against the wall or something landed on it or laid against it over time. Do some 80 grit scratches, some deep ones. especially by the palm where people are more likely to touch it. Let's hit them rivets. Those are looking way too pretty. Got another chip right here. I want my scratches to go in one direction. Kind of scuff it up a little bit, get in between them fingers, make it look more gnarly. That's getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and play with this thing, sand a little more and uh, Use a couple different sandpapers and methods, and then I'll come back and I think we'll throw some clear on this thing. So it's getting pretty close. Okay, we're back. I got everything sanded the way I like it. I'm pretty happy with how she looks. Like I said, this is the second paint job on this thing. So if you want to see the original one, you can look me up on uh, HalloweenForum.com. It's under cobwebs and candlesticks. But I'm happy with how this looks now. It's a lot darker. The other one was a lot lighter and more golder. But I think the copper is a lot more warmer and nicer. So Let's put our first coat of clear on this thing. We're gonna do two overall. You gotta do them about 20 minutes apart. So here goes this first coat, let me get my mask on. All right. 
First coat of clear is on. Let's go ahead and kick this up a notch. True Gangster's Rock Metal Flake. I got some copper metal flake here. House of Color. It only takes a little bit. Otherwise, you'd be looking like a bass boat. So I'm going to dip my finger in. That's plenty. Done. Anything more than that, you look like a bowling ball or a bass boat. All right, let this sit, and we'll come back and put coat number two on, and then we'll call it done. All right, our first coat's dry or tacky. Just when it starts to stick up, it's ready for the next coat. I got the hand laid down, so the second coat I want to put on heavy. I want everything to kind of flow out and bury all that little metal flake that we threw in there. So let me grab my mask. We'll put our second final coat of clear on. We'll call this guy done. call that done we'll come back and take a look at it in a minute all right so it's been about an hour pulled the plaque out of the booth and that's what she's looking like right there nice and glossy you can see the metal flake standing up in it i'm really happy with it it's a lot darker than the other version i painted if you guys want to see the original version it's on uh, halloweenforum.com uh, just look me up under cobwebs and candlesticks i got it posted there but I'm really happy with this one. Looks more coppery, looks a little more aged. I really dig it. So this is protection from the evil eye. Does anybody have their evil eye on you? If they do, you just poke that some bitch in their damn evil eye. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I gotta find a nice place to hang it. If you guys have any questions, just hit me below in the comments. Any questions about my uh, complicated base clear process, but if you guys like more base clear projects, let me know. That's what we got. So I hope you guys come back for more. I'll see you next time. Everybody, stay rad.